Morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Morning Heart Devotion. To start off, let's offer a greeting about our heavenly parents and true parents. Chongjin, Chongbonimke, Kyongbe, Baro. And now to lead us through the family play, I'd like to invite the Reverend Milhan Stevens. Kajang Mengse, Il, Chanyo Guk Juin, Uri Kajangan, Cham Sarangal Jungshim Hago. 본현 땅을 찾아 본연의 창조 이상인 지상 천국과 천상 천국을 장건할 것을 맹세하나이다. 이 천여국 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님을 모시어 천주의 대표적 가정이 되며 중심적 가정이 되어 가정에서는 효자 국가에서는 충신, 세계에서는 성인, 천주에서는 성자의 가정의 도리를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 3. 천여국 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 4대 심정권과 3대 왕권과 황족권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 4. 천여국 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님의 창조의 상인 천주대 가족을 형성하여 자유와 평화와 통일과 행복의 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 오 천여국 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 매일 주체적 천상 세계와 대상적 지상 세계의 통일을 향해 전진적 발전을 촉진화할 것을 맹세하나이다. 6. 전여국 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님의 대신 가정으로서 천운을 움직이는 가정이 되어 하늘의 축복을 주변에 연결시키는 가정을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 7. 천여국 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 본연의 혈통과 연결된 위하는 생활을 통하여 심정문화 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 8. 천여국 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 천여극 시대를 맞이하여 절대 신앙, 절대 사랑, 절대 복종으로 신인의 일체 이상을 이루어 지상 천국과 천상 천국의 해방권과 석방권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. Reverend Milhan Stevens, and now to open us up in prayer, I'd like to invite up Reverend Thomas Baldwin. Thomas Baldwin. Good morning. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning, Dr. Yang. Let us pray. Sarang Hananim, loving Heavenly Parent, we greet you this day. This day is a new day, March 30, in which we have opportunity to invest ourselves. Father, it is only as we invest ourselves going beyond what we believe are our limits that you can be with us. Father, because it is only with utmost sincere devotion that we can change this world. Father, we thank you for our true parents who have shown the way. We thank you for our true parents who have revealed to us that we must build the kingdom of heaven. We thank you for our true parents who have revealed to us that we must perfect the four great realms of heart. Heavenly Father, especially in America, we start at a great disadvantage because the American culture has no sense of filial piety. Father, so we need to purify ourselves again and be able to establish true realms of children's love, of brother and sister love, of conjugal love and then a parental love. Heavenly Father, I, you are calling each of us into those realms of heart. I pray that you can deeply touch us 
deeply touch the brothers and sisters here and those who will join later to be able, empowered to fulfill that, that four great realms of heart, the three great kingships, the realm of the royal family. Heavenly Father, Dr. Young is so clear. If we had perfected the four great realms of heart within our family, no one could stop people from coming to join our families. There would be no stopping the expansion of our family to a tribe, to a people, to a nation, to a world and cosmos. Father, we pray that we can begin to embody that those ideals in ourselves. We pray, Father, that as we are embodying those ideals, that we can support our true mother, who has set her determination that, that North and South Korea will be united this year as a God-centered nation. Heavenly Father, and with that, 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 will, that will mark the beginning of an era of peace. We pray that we can be able to overcome the division within ourselves, between our mind and body, which is the war that has gone on longer than any others, and be able to totally offer ourselves to you. We thank you this day. All this I sincerely report in the name of brothers and sisters gathered together and in our names, Tom and Rita Laylis Baldwin, the Laylis Baldwin Chanel Gook, Bless Central Family. Aju. Aju. Thank you so much, Tom and Pauline. What a beautiful prayer is. Wow, so powerful and very sincere. Thank you so much, Tom and uh, Rita. 감사합니다. Thank you, Reverend Baldwin, for open, opening us up with such a sincere, beautiful prayer. Brothers and sisters, we're going to jump straight into our gratitude sharing. So let's just spend the next seven minutes discussing, remembering what we're grateful for today. Share with one another and we'll be back here to share with everyone else. So we'll see you all in about seven minutes.
You had a wonderful sharing in your breakout. I had the opportunity to be with uh, Veronica Tashiro and Reverend Bonfu together with Jenny. I'd like to invite a Veronica, Veronica from Arizona, actually 3 a.m. there, she said, to share with us her gratitude points this morning. Oh, hi, Rest Fred. I'm just so grateful to be in your breakout room. And yeah, it's 3 a.m. here, but um, I'm very grateful for you for being in leadership and you're a second gen. So I'm very proud of you, Rest Fred, and grateful to all the second gen who are in leadership. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Veronica. You are joining yeah, from such early time. Wow, thank you. Wow. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Your dedication. Kamsamida, Veronica. Thank you, Veronica. You had a lot more to share, but I know we're going to keep it to that. Um, next, I'd like to invite up Chonnan, Chonnan and Jungae, um, to share with us their reflection, not reflection, their gratitude points this morning. Uh, I just said I was grateful for my family and my parents and for giving birth to me. And yeah, I didn't really say too much in the breakout room. Um, I was grateful for, I am grateful for morning devotion and being able to wake up every morning um, to study and learn together and like, and like, um, <sighs> share what we've all learned and learn from each other. Wow. <laughs> so the Jonghye, how old are you? 15. 15, beautiful. And then Chonnan? Uh, I'm 14. 14, wow, 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 wow. So who's your father's name? Your father's name is who? Maurice. Huh? Maurice. Maris, our mom, your mother, mother name? Yuki. Yuki, wow, so beautiful. Chanan and Jungye, wow. You're joining the morning, no, morning fundoke, morning devotion from your ages. Wow, that's great, beautiful. God surely protect you and loving you as long as you love God, as long as you love God's work. God bless you. Thank you, Chonnan and Jungye. Thank you. Thank you, Chonnan and Jungye. I, I knew you were a little bit familiar. You're usually next to Reverend Maurice, right? Sitting sitting to the side. Yeah, I recognize this. So thank you for sharing this morning. And uh, with all those short gratitude sharings, meaning we're going to start a little earlier today. Uh, brothers and sisters, let's prepare, let's prepare our hearts, prepare our minds to receive our heavenly inspiration from beloved Continental Director, Dr. Chonshik Young. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, my dear brothers and sisters, clergy and members of office. 안녕하십니까? I came back to New York, uh, so I'm so happy to see each one of you again this morning. Thank you. Uh, uh, yesterday was the last day of the Subregion 3 tour. And I attended and met the Indianapolis family uh, church members through Zoom call because I could not meet them in person due to uh, concerns of the spreading uh, coronavirus. I heard testimonies from three people who have experienced campus witnessing. They were very touching and hopeful stories of pioneering campus witnessing in Indianapolis. So I gave a guidance of the importance of the witnessing and encouraged them to break through in having three spiritual children. I really appreciate the, our Takami, our sub regional three, and all the staff, leaders, and brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for your cooperation and helping me to uh, travel here and there. Even though I could not see the Jack couple, and then, but I, 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 I was happy to talk to him through the Zoom. And also, Hebangja did a wonderful job. Our Heavenly USA team, really, they really uh, brought incredible Holy Spirit everywhere. Thank you very much. 
for every everybody. And then three guys, uh, they, they gave a very beautiful testimonies. Today, I'd like to talk about international conference on the on the unity of the science icons from True Mother's Anthology Book One again. So, uh, Heavenly Honey, please uh, read. International Conference on the Unity of the Sciences. Though we are enjoying the conveniences of 21st century civilization, to say that civilization until now spurred development based on a destructive perspective instead of understanding God's circumstances and heart and bringing all people to live together would not be wrong. When we look at the history of civilization and the history of warfare, far from making the world that God originally created, a world of abundance and health, our highly developed civilization has utilized its scientific knowledge for producing destructive weapons of war and pushing for nuclear development. Do you know how many nuclear reactors there are in South Korea? Though these reactors provide us with energy, what will happen if something goes wrong with them? You have probably heard of and are familiar with the dropping of a nuclear bomb on Hiroshima, Japan during World War II. A nuclear reactor in Ukraine also went wrong and caused extensive damage. Korea is a nation that possesses many such dangerous nuclear reactors. Recently, an earthquake hit Gyeongju. There is a nuclear reactor in the vicinity, and I have heard there are still plans to construct more in the future. Originally, human beings were supposed to research and develop the energy created by God in a beneficial direction. Today's nuclear weapons are the result of researching and developing energy in a destructive direction. If we cannot resolve this, there is no future for the world, no future for the human race. True Father brought together and educated many intellectuals through the International Conference on the Unity of the Sciences. In the midst of this, he proclaimed the end of communism and was able to actualize that result. When the United States, a world power, could not imagine such a thing while facing the threat of communism, True Father was able to do it without anyone's help. Yet this nation, the United States, which was raised as a central nation of the providence, lives in the midst of chaos today. Once again, for you and me, our task is to give the world not despair, but hope. That is why from next year, I will stimulate research to take a direction that can heal the damage inflicted on the earth and on its inhabitants by the misguided developments of scientific civilization. Yes. True Mother said that science and civilization have been used to make wars and weapons. But now, in the age of the original creation, that is the in the era of the Chun Il Gu, True Mother emphasized that all civilizations and science must first be used for the restoration of the nature, the happiness of mankind, and the ideal world. Today, in this time, we will learn about the environmental protection movement in True Father's work. So please, Heavenly Honey. Today, the world is confronted with the serious human crisis of sexual immorality, family breakdown, and the surge of individualism. In addition, environmental pollution threatens life's very existence on this one and only earth. In our human relationships, we need now more than ever, a movement practicing love and mutual cooperation. With regards to nature, it is urgent that we begin a movement to love all creation and to protect and conserve our environment. Religious people in particular must lead this movement. From the early days, 
True parents taught that unless one loves nature, which was created for human beings, one cannot claim to love people. And unless one loves people who are created to be the true children of God, one cannot say that one loves God. It is natural that whoever loves God will love people who were created to be God's children. Hence, one cannot claim to love people and God unless one loves nature, which was created for people. Yes. In the era of the channel, we must love the realm of the environment centered on all things that God created for humans. Second, you have to love people. You know, to love people, we need to have education to cultivate our hearts. So Father is emphasizing that religious people who love God more than anyone else should take the lead in the moment to love creation and uh, uh, nature and to love people. True parents have taught us from an early age that unless one loves nature, which was created for human beings, one cannot claim to love people. And, and unless one loves people who are created to be true children of God, and one cannot uh, say that one loves God. The love, of all, the love of all things, the love of all mankind, and the love of, uh, love of God actually lies in the same uh, linear line. In other words, love for all things must lead, lead to human love. And human love must be connected to God's love. That's why saying things, one who truly loves God, he can love human beings. One truly loves human beings, he can love the nature. One who truly loves the nature, he can love human beings and God as well. Actually, same things, the same alignment. Continue. In an ideal society or nation, People will transcend national and racial boundaries, establish mutual cooperation and harmony, and live together happily. They will be fully conscious of being God's sons and daughters and of existing as one great extended family that can live as brothers and sisters centered on true parents. This is the place where all the blessed families who have restored their lineage realm of ownership and heart, living with true parents' culture and language will accomplish a world of freedom, peace, and unity. All people will share God's culture of heart and coexist enjoying interdependence, mutual prosperity, and universally shared values. This world will have no corruption, injustice, war, or crime. People will eliminate the causes of environmental pollution and will protect and love all things of creation as true owners. Thank you. True Father said that in order to fallen human being to return to God, they have to undergo the three great transformations. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about three great transformations without exception. This is very important, my brothers and sisters. The first is the change of blood lineage from Satan blood lineage to God's blood lineage. The second is change of the realm of the ownership. That's why Father encourages us that you know all our belongings not belong to us. Actually, should uh, should belong to God. That's why in order to make that come the condition. You know, to change over the, your ownership, you need to have the condition through the total living offering. The third is the change of heart. Fallen human being must change their lineage through blessing and become children of God. The second is the change of the ownership. Of course, my ownership must also be transformed into God. But all things must be transformed before God. That's why not just only my own you know, property, my own possession, uh, you know, we need to really, uh, the entire nature need to go back to God, uh, God's bosom. 
And to do this, the environment must be returned to its original environment. Therefore, we must love nature as God. The last thing you need to change is a change of your heart. For this reason, True Father said the following, a large family society in which all people will, will be fully conscious of being God's sons and daughters and of existing as one great extended family that can live as brothers and sisters centered on true parents. This is the place where all the blessed family who have restored their lineage, realm of the ownership and heart, living with the true parents, culture and language will accomplish a world of freedom, peace, and unity. When a world of peace and unity is achieved in this way, people will lead a life of in, uh, interdependence, uh, mutual prosperity, and universally share the values in the culture of the heart of God. Therefore, this world has nothing to do with corruption, injustice, war, or sin, and humankind is supposed to remove polluting factors from the global environment and to love and protect all things as a true owners. And today, a living divine, a living divine principle, again, we are talking about the uh, three great kings. Let's, let's study. Characteristics of the three great kingships. Grandparents are in the position representing, representing even God. Thus, grandparents in the family represent the spirit world and God. Therefore, the four position foundation centered on God stated in the principle is a four position foundation centered on grandparents in the original world. Originally, the center of the family four position foundation is God and the true parents of humankind. But the grandparents stand in the center of the four position foundation as a substitute. As a result, in the future, the grandparents stand in the position of God. Therefore, the grandparents become the highest in the family. God's position is the highest, right? Therefore, parents and children have to serve grandparents as the highest. Yeah, very important point here, my brothers and sisters. We need to know that God's original structure, you know, four realms of heart and three great kingships. We are today talking about three great kingships, right? If each family lives serving their grandparents, the spirit of the filial piety is automatically cultivated. You know, when we are talking of the filial piety and filial heart, without serving and attending their grandparents in the family, then the filial piety and filial heart just only concept, just conceptual, my brothers and sisters. Nowadays, most of the grandparents live alone and away from their families, or uh, there are many people living in nursing homes. How can we create a heavenly society if we do not change the environment of this worldly society and family? When our parents live in a nursing home, that means our God is not at home. I do not know. In this Western society, how to change this kind of culture? Not just only Western society, even Korea and Japan and, and all even Eastern countries following the same pattern. I really worry about that. How can we go back to heavenly culture? Really substantially, how, we, how do we attend and serving our grandparents? Grandparents is a position of God in the family. So when our parents live in a nursing home, our God is not at home, at, home, at home. Oh my God, my brother says, what to do? Next content. Parents are the king representing the present world. Grandparents are the king of the spirit world and parents the king of the earth. Additionally, because they represent the family, they are the king in the family. Next. 
Children are the patriarch of the family. Currently, they are not a king. Instead, they are in the position of princes and princesses, which is the same as the future king. Thus, children are all kings of the future earth and kings of the family. They also represent all the descendants. After children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren will be born, and they are all future kings. Therefore, children represent the future. So let's uh, study based on our total father thought about the three great kingships. The purpose of human beings. What are grandfathers and grandmothers? They are the ambassadors with full authority dispatched by the heavenly kingdom. That is why you should attend your grandfather and grandmother in the same way you attend God. Your mother and father are the kings of the present human family of 5 billion people. And you are princes and princesses who will inherit the kingship of the future. This is the tradition of which you are a part. Yes, here father talking about here. What are grandfathers and mothers? They are the ambassadors with full authority, my brothers and sisters. They are ambassadors. Sometimes father talking about, you know, our grandparents are ambassador for peace, Ambassador for freedom, ambassador for unification, ambassador for happiness, ambassador for love. Ambassador for love. Our grandparents are ambassadors for love. Grandfather and grandmother are ambassador of love that God directly sent to the family. Do you live and serve your ambassador of love in your home? Or is your ambassador of love now living in a nursing home? Or do they live alone in different houses? From now on, we have to start a, a movement that serves and attend the ambassador of love. How can we invite God into our home if we do not have the ambassador of love? We need to keep in mind that the channel through which God's love comes to our homes comes through our grandparents. And we should start the movement to serve and attend our grandparents. Of course, there are some people who are very difficult, uh, difficult in reality. But we should try such an effort. If you have a, such a dream and vision to live with your grandparents, God will grant you such a wish because you don't have that kind of vision, you don't have that kind of idea, you don't have that kind of the dream before you start in family. When you were young and you have that kind of dream and vision and almost wishes, how can I attend our grandparents in our family? If you have that kind of concept and idea based upon divine principle, four realms of heart and three, three great kingship, if you have that kind of heart earlier, you have that kind of vision earlier when you were young, Actually, your vision always makes reality. But you don't have that kind of the idea and concept. Just follow the secular world. That is the problem. In the future, there should be a movement in which grandchildren will fight each other to serve their own families, you know, to serve their grandparents. And then first the grandchild said, oh, you know, I will bring the, my, I want to attend my grandparents in my, in my home. And the second grandchild said, no, 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 you already, and then serving, you know, our grandparents already one year, two year. Now uh, this is my turn to really, you know, attend and then what's that, uh, serving my grandparents. Need to have that kind of good fight each other. My brothers and sisters, still we are very far away from heavenly parents about the blueprint, right? 
So as long as we attend our grandparents in our family, no need to teach about the filial piety, filial heart. If we do not attend our grandparents in our family, filial heart, filial piety, just only concept. Just only concept I am telling you. As long as you attend and serve your grandparents together, and then, you know, as a father and mother, really loving your own father. Then grandchildren automatically follow and learn what, what is your filial heart, what is your filial piety. Need to show to, to the, our grandchildren through, you know, daily, uh, daily uh, exemplary life, my brothers and sisters. Divine principles are only concept. Should practice in our daily life. Next content. So then for what purpose do human beings live? The purpose of human life is to inherit every kingship realm of the heavenly kingdom, the kingship of the past, present, and future. Doesn't everyone want to be a king or a queen? Based on this kind of mainstream way of thought, we become citizens who form reciprocal bonds of the realm of heart as siblings. Centering on the lineage of the eldest son, this is passed on for tens and thousands of years as the lineage of the royal family. Yes, the move on to serve grandparents in one's home is a training to serve God on earth. Filial piety to serve one's parents and grandparents means that the family will never be destroyed. That's why we really need to have that kind of campaign. We need to begin from our blessed family. Of course, there are some uh, not, e uh, not easy situation to uh, living to it with the grandparents. Then you need to bring your grandchildren to your grandparents' home very, very often. Just a husband and wife living together with the children. Then where's the central figure? Where's the central point? Something missing, isn't it? Something missing in the family need to have the structure, four portion foundation, just only husband and wife and children. Where's the central point? No substantial four portion foundation. And how can we practice God's ideal blueprint? Divine principle is not just only concept. Need to practice, need to show. That's why, Father, I really love Father that the concept. You know, the grandparents is a position of God. Grandparents are, you know, ambassador for peace, ambassador for freedom, ambassador for unification, ambassador for the happiness, ambassador for love. Where is our God? In nursing home? They living separately? Where? Where is our God? Where is our God? In Western society, where is our God? We need to think seriously about this matter. Not because of the money or with no money, no house, no room. That's why you, ha you have that kind of concept. That's why God cannot provide. From young age, you need to think that no matter what, I will attend my grandparents, leaving my, my, with my grandparents. If we have that kind of beautiful concept and idea and vision, God surely provide and your vision will come true. Vision always makes a reality because there is no vision that nothing come true. Many people say, oh, no money, and no house and no room. I am telling you, God is my sponsor. As long as you have that kind of a beautiful idea and concept, attitude and dream, I am telling you, God will be our sponsor. I truly believe in that. I have my own experience. When I was young, I really want to live three generations, four generations living together. My dream came through. Four generations living together at one my house, one house. My brother said, of course, we cannot continue 
because children grow up, many grandchildren more multiply. Of course, we need to rearrange for that. I really love to parents the concept and teaching divine principle, talking about four great realms of heart and three great kings. Today's youth ministry are heart of the compassion and each fruits. So let's study uh, Bible first. This may be uh, centering on this Bible verse and maybe final series. Let's just study. Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 to 17, to the church in Ephesus. To the angel of the church in Ephesus writes, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who have claimed to be apostles, but are not, and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. To the church in Smyrna, to the angel of the church in Smyrna writes, these are the words of him who is the first and the last, who died and came to life again. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know about the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you life as a victor's crown. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. To the church in Pergamum, to the angel of the church in Pergamum writes, these are the words of him who has the sharp double-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. Yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me, not even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was put to death in your city where Satan lives. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. There are some among you who hold on to the teachings of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin so that they ate food sacrificed to idols and committed sexual immorality. Likewise, you also have those who hold on to the teachings of the Nicolaitans. Repent, therefore. Otherwise, I will soon come to you and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. Yeah, thank you, Heavenly Honey. Uh, based on this Bible verse, and let's uh, uh, study uh, centering on the heart of the compassion and its fruits. Please read. What we need to pay special attention to is to have a compassionate heart. We must not lose our compassionate heart. Please remember that if you lose compassion in a fruitful period like these days, 
your inner person or your entire behavior is wrong. We must not lose our compassion. Don't lose love. When you see the faults of others, you need to know how to take care of them and take responsibility for them. Even if we see that the other person has made a mistake, we must have a heart of concern for him in prayer. Even if someone fails, we must not cut them off, divide or criticize them, but share in their pain instead. If I think that he really could not do it and worry that he became that way because of me, I will gradually grow both internally and externally, as well as in heart. Otherwise, we are prone to arrogance. Yes. Based on this content, a heart of compassion and its fruit. This is very important. You know, we don't have a heart of a compassion. Then we will lose our first love. So uh, that's why today I really uh, kind of the formula. Okay, this is a faith formula. I'd like to talk about how can I have a heart of compassion. Uh, the last few days we study a lot, right? So then conclusion. Uh, now how can I have a heart of compassion? Number one. When you see the faults or mistakes of others, think of them as your own faults or mistakes. Secondly, we do the heart of the parents, pray for the other person while worrying about their shortcomings and mistakes. When parents see children's, you know, uh, you know about their shortcomings and mistakes, and then parents try to be responsible and embrace them. You know, that's why even though parents see children's shortcomings or mistakes, still can give and take with the children very well because of the heart of the parents. Thirdly, have the mindset to take responsibility for other person's shortcomings and mistakes and educate them. This kind of mindset when you see someone's mistake and shortcoming, and you need to think that with a parent heart, I want to be responsible for that. I need to raise up them. I want to educate them. We need to have that kind of heart if you are able. Do you understand what I mean? Be responsible for, rather than just only criticizing. When you see that that person, the other person has made a mistake, think that I have the potential to make a bigger mistake than the other person made. Wow, this is a beautiful attitude. Do you understand what I'm thinking? Do you understand what I'm thinking? What, what I'm talking to you? When you someone's weak point, mistake and shortcoming, then you need to think that I have the more potential to make bigger mistake than the, the other person made. Already need to reflect on myself. When you see someone's fault, someone's mistake, this is the right attitude, you know, as a true man. Number five, think of Jesus who died on the cross for sinners. Think of the love of Jesus who prayed for his enemies and even as he died. Wow. You know, when someone's mistake and shortcoming and Jesus did not blame and forgive him and then pray for him, what a, what a, what a his attitude is. Number six, think that I too will resemble God and resemble perfect love. You know, the uh, Bible, Matthew chapter five, verse 48 say that, be for perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. I love this Bible verse. Do you know why? God is perfect. God is a God is a perfect of the true love. What, what, what do I understand God's perfection centering on true love? 
it is uh, like a whole love that loves everyone without exception. God's love is God's love is total love. Even your fall, when you see even your fault and shortcoming, anything, embracing. God's love is total love without missing anyone. That's why since I learned this Bible verse and, and also from Jesus and through Father, I determined in my life, I don't have an enemy. Of course, I'm still struggling to overcome. But I always remind myself, I in my life, I don't have an enemy. I want to love everybody without exception. Doesn't matter, black color, white color, yellow color, Korean or Japanese or Western or Eastern. God said, be perfect. Therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect. God wants to love everybody. I want to resemble that kind of God's perfect character. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That's why in, uh, in, in your daily life, in my life of faith, I need to love everybody. Even though you, when you see someone's mistake and shortcoming and you know, problems, I want to raise up him. I want to protect him. I want to responsible for. That's why I, want, I decided to love everybody without exception. Wow. Whole oh, love that loves everyone without exception. If we have that kind of a heart, like a God, like our true parents, like Jesus, there is a way to resemble our beloved Jesus and true parents. Compassion lesson from the Bible. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters, right? This is beautiful, isn't it? Jesus died for us. Only he laid the incredible foundation. That's why we need to love our own brothers and sisters like Jesus, like God. As such, there is an inseparable relationship between loving God and loving brothers and sisters. There's no difference, okay? Loving God and loving your brothers and sisters, there's no difference. One who truly loves God, he or she can love their own brothers and sisters like the same as God. In the prayer the Lord taught us, he said, and forgive us, for forgive us our debts. And we also have forgiven our debtors, right? So you, do not, you cannot forgive someone means even God cannot forgive you, you know? Wow, really, I love the Bible as well. The Lord said, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the uh, plank in your own eye? Fallen man, not easy to really, you know, someone's sin is more greater than my own sin. Just because we told our brothers, and sisters not to criticize them and count them when they sin and are walking the path of sin, we do not mean to simply ignore and neglect them. This is a very important point, my brothers and sisters. We should be able to counsel on our uh, uh, brethren. Uh, uh, brethren. If your brothers and or sisters sin, go and point out their fault. Just between the two of you, if they listen to you, you, you have won them over. Okay, so oh, we no need to criticize and no need to say anything, nothing like that. You know, we need to point out, we need to say something. However, very important point. However, the counsel to correct the wrongdoing of the other person should always be done based on what? 
based on love, like a parent. When parents scold the children, but they are based on love. That's why children come back again. We must avoid the criticism because it comes from hate and uh, uh, condemna uh, condemnation. But the counsel that comes out of love is to the work of saving that person's soul, my brothers and sisters. That's why when you point out something is a fault and it's a shortcoming, not based on love, that is a criticism. However, you need to correct them. You need to speak out something about their sins and their problems based on our love, based on parental love. That is another sin. We should do that like that, you know, my brothers and sisters. Heavenly Honey, let you read. Continue. In the Unification Church, it is easy to become arrogant if you hear the principle and think wrong. It is easy to ignore those who do not know the principle just because you know it. It is easy to judge the other person who does not know the principle well with the standard of the principle you know. Even if you know the principle, if you do not put it into practice, you do not know the principle. Even if you know the principle, if you do not grow, you do not know the principle. Even if you know the principle, if you do not multiply, you do not know the principle. It is easy to affirm yourself if things go wrong. It is easy to criticize people if you do not deny yourself and affirm yourself. You have the risk of adopting a faith that worships idols. Wow, this content is really reflect on myself. Here saying that even if you do not, if you know the uh, divine principle, but if you do not multiply, if you do not multiply, if you don't have a spiritual children, you do not know the divine principle. Even though you are teaching divine principle, you don't have your own king, you don't have all your followers to respect you, you do not know divine principle. And you truly know divine principle, surely practice, surely will bring the result, surely multiply. Next. What is the reason that God's providence has been frustrated to this day? Why did Jesus die on the cross? We need to know why Jesus died on the cross and furthermore, find out the circumstances of God. Peter ran away because his faith affirmed himself. In the end, he loved himself. In short, we see through history that he became an enemy before God because he separated from the Lord and affirmed himself. Peter became a truly changed man after realizing what he had done. But everyone should keep the first resolution and actions they made. We must not change and move forward. That way, we can become good. Yes, here, very important point. Everyone should keep the first resolution action. You need to keep first the love. Then how? How we can do? How can we keep first the first love? How can we, uh, we keep the first resolution and actions? One thing. No matter what you need to grow up, no matter what you need to multiply. Any company, do not make the profit, need to close down. Our life of faith, the same things. We do not know how to multiply. Don't, we do not produce our spiritual children. Then there's something wrong. Company should collapse. And your spiritual life is really not so great. Become minus. That's why we need to really focus witnessing. Salvation, as long as you focus on and witnessing and salvation, that is the way to best way to grow up, that is the best way to develop, that is the best way to multiply. And your life or spiritual life is very stable. As long as then a company make the profit, it really guarantee develop, you know, promise promising. That's why we really need to focus on salvation and make the profit. 
making profit means really multiply. Therefore, without involving witnessing, without concern of the salvation, you are nothing dealing with God. Continue. Who among the Unification Church members today joined to make ends meet? After hearing the principle and knowing the will, I surrendered before the words. That is a good heart. I denied myself and affirmed the principle. Isn't that a good heart? It is the beginning of a good heart for a believer to hear the words and say that he will believe them. Let's not throw away the first action. There are people who feel conflict in their life of faith and sleep without doing any activity, then affirm themselves, lose their subject, and leave. There are some people who quit the Unification Church because it is a path that cannot be continued without maintaining the first act. If you make a profit and multiply in your environment, your spirit will last forever. Therefore, faith must grow and multiply. Otherwise, you will unknowingly affirm yourself and start complaining. Wow. If you make a profit and multiply in your environment, when you increase your about the spiritual children day by day, I am telling you, guarantee your spirit will last forever. Any company make profit can last. My brothers and sisters, witnessing salvation is not just only duty and responsibility. Definitely need to do it. In order to, you know, to grow up, the blessing means need to multiply. If if blessing do not multiply, blessing become cursed. Why God chose me? Why God chose you? God want to multiply through me, but I do not know how to multiply. Then cannot last. My brothers and sisters, we need to know that. Why God choose me? Why God encourages me become to uh, become the blessed family? There is a clear reason. Okay, final slide. Everyone, the lessons to be kept through the praise and rebuke of these three churches today is to keep a compassionate heart. Compassion. Those who repent with tears can receive mercy and have mercy on others. Everyone. Let's go with compassion. Let's go with a heart of compassion. The compassionate heart is a heart that longs for people who are good like God and has pity on people who are inferior to them. You have to keep that heart to bear fruit in the end. In order to do that, we need to cherish the first act that we determined after joining the Unification Church. Wow. What a beautiful guidance, right? The compassionate heart is a heart that longs for people who are like God and has a pity on people who are inferior to them. You have to keep that heart to bear fruit in the end. Great. Thank you very much. God bless you. Dr. Young, for today's message, there's so much fact in there. I know you have always so much to give to us, but you're just constrained by time. Uh, you talked about loving nature, loving our grandparents, building the three great kinships um, at our homes, and also to be able to take full responsibility over everything and to have that compassionate heart like God and Jesus did. Brothers and sisters, we're going to jump straight into our uh, reflection. Please take the next few minutes to reflect, digest, and also to share any insight you gain from today's morning devotion so we can grow in our understanding together. We'll see you all in seven minutes.
Welcome back, everyone. Hope you had a wonderful sharing in your breakouts. Uh, I had a wonderful time with Clofa Desital and uh, the Hamasaka. So Hisamori Sang and Miyoko Sang, if you could please unmute and share with us your reflection from today's morning devotion. Uh, thank you so much for today's devotion. Hamasaka Sang! Uh, hi! <laughs> Hamasaka! <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, I'm very glad to join the this devotion, and uh, yeah, and uh, I'm not. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. No, yes, my children. Uh, I am not living here, but uh, I can see the. And many brothers and sisters in the United States in this devotion, as like my grandchildren. So I'm very happy. But uh, yeah, definitely I have to live with uh, you know, grandchildren in the future. Thank yeah. you so much. You need to see often your children. <laughs> yeah. I... <laughs> grandchildren do not come, no choice. You need to go and see often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I actually, I told Rest Fred, I, I have regret that we could not live with uh, all children and the grandchildren. And, uh, but my husband said he's uh, uh, very grateful that we had the very new, newly born uh, grandchild and uh, they li live near here. But wow. anyway, my in my part, you know, I really reflected myself. I couldn't because of our mission, of course, and I can make excuse because of our mission, we moved around all all over the world, not all over the world, like Dr. Yon, but <laughs> different places in a different mm -hmm. countries. Mm -hmm. But I really felt we could have lived with our children and the grandchildren mm -hmm. if we were wider mm -hmm. when we were a little younger, maybe yeah. 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we already had grandchildren or uh, not <laughs> grandchild also. Yeah. So this is my regret. Yeah. So mm -hmm. even from now on, I try to <laughs> do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Hamasaka Kapo. Thank you, Gamzamida. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, um, Yoko Sang and Hisamari Sang for sharing. Our next, I'd like to call on Hendrix, Akemi Hendrix, to share with us her reflection today. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Uh, I'm, uh, this is Akemi Hendrix from New Jersey. I was a uh, breakout room with Mirham. I mentioned to him, I just came back from Japan, my two weeks trip from Japan. And then I arrived in Newark airport last night. And then during two weeks, I tried to join the morning devotion from Japan, but I couldn't attend any one of them. Mm -hmm. Then I felt kind of a blank. And then, then, uh, since I'm in the United States, so I attended this six o'clock morning devotion. The first breakout room was with Dr. Young. Then I said, <laughs> oh my God, that's really feeling me for the last two weeks blank. And the second breakout room was Mirhan too. And I said, oh, double, uh, double dipping servings. <laughs> and, and then I, I had a good foundation of relative and the tribe. And then during trip, and I met one of the cousins and he said, when you see Dr. Yon, say hello. And I couldn't say him to Dr. Yon this morning. Anyway, he's coming to New Jersey. So that time I will uh, say about his message. Okay. And then <laughs> the second one is uh, Dr. Yon's uh, Living Divine Principle. If you, if you, your grandparents live in the nursing home, that is a kick out the God from your house and the home, mm -hmm. and then put the God in the nursing home. And then, uh, reason why I visited Japan, 
and that is my mother's 94th birthday. Last two years, I couldn't visit there because of COVID. And this time I went there. And then she is in nursing home. So <laughs> I felt so bad. <laughs> and then, anyway, uh, I really appreciate my brother's family who took care of my mother. And then uh, I really feel blessing through this morning devotion, especially this morning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got a Dr. Yang and I, I got a Mirha. Even mm-hmm. I didn't attend any last two weeks, mm-hmm. but God does not forget me. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Hendrix. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Akemi san, uh, for sharing with us and welcome back. <laughs> welcome back to Morning Devotion. All right, on to our announcements, starting from the top. If you are feeling inspired, please invite people to join in on this morning devotion experience. They can find us on Facebook, on YouTube, or just go to edu.familyfed.org to access all everything we have prepared for you, morning devotion related. The entire catalog is there. If you'd like to join the Zoom experience as well, it's all on there, edu.familyfed.org. Org. The link should be right there by now. It should be saved somewhere else. If you're feeling especially inspired, there's a link in the chat. Feel free to click that to donate to support this ministry. There's a lot of staff working around to make this accessible to people around the world and mostly in America. So if you'd like to support that, please click that link as well. And now we're going to jump straight into our musical offering. We have a special musical offering from Davida Morgan. Davida Morgan. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, good morning, my brothers and sisters. Good morning, Dr. Young. Thank you so much for your wonderful, wonderful internal Abita guidance. Morgan. Wow, so happy to see you. Devetta, it's really Devetta, not Devita, Devetta, but thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Dr. Young spoke a couple of weeks ago about Mary Magdalene, and I was inspired because this is, March is International Women's Month and Nationals Women's Month. And so this, the offering that I am going to give is a song about Mary Magdalene. It's yeah. sung in the first person, I'm singing it a cappella. but please, my sisters, this is to honor not only the he- feminine heavenly divine, but our true mother, all of my sisters around the world, the women of history in the Bible, as well as in um, conventional history, because women have played an important role and we now should step into the greatness and give the compassionate heart that Dr. Young spoke so brilliantly Thank about you. today. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Dabeta. The room grew still as she made her way to Jesus. She stumbled from the tears that left her blind. She felt such pain. Some spoke in anger, heard folks whisper, there's no place here for her kind. Still on she came through the tears that flushed her face until at last she knelt before his feet. And though she spoke no words, everything she said was heard as she poured her love for the master from her box of alabaster and I've come to pour my praise on him like oil from Mary's alabaster box don't be angry if I wash his feet <laughs> with my tears and dry them with my hair you weren't there the night he found me you did not feel what I felt when he wrapped his loving arms around me and you don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster box. I can't forget the way life used to be. I was a prisoner 
to the sin that had me bound. I spent my days, poured my life without measure into a little treasure box I thought I'd found until the day when Jesus came to me and healed my soul with the wonder of his touch. So now I'm giving back to him all the praise he's worthy of. I've been forgiven and that's why I love him so. I've come to pour my praise on him like oil from Mary's alabaster box. Don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears and I dry them with my hands. You were there the night Jesus found me. You did not feel what I felt when he wrapped his loving arms around me. And you don't know the cost of the oil. Oh, you don't know the cost of my praise. You don't know the cost of the oil in my Alabaster Hearts. Wow. Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So beautiful. You are really amazing lady. Thank you so much, Dabeta Morgan. Do you know Dabeta means, Da means in Korea, every, everything. Uh, uh, better. Everything is better and better and better. Everything better. That better. Wow. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Young. Thank you. Thank you, Davetta. That was so beautifully sung. I forgot it was a cappella. That was amazing. Thank you for singing so soulfully this morning. Brun sister, this is a good segue, actually, just because I forgot. But last yesterday was the end of the 13th 40th day condition for morning devotion. That's right. And today we have a cake. Look at it. Um, so why don't we just start singing a song? Uh, what is it? What's the song? Happy 40th day to you. <laughs> Happy 40th anniversary to you. Happy 40th day, Dr. Young and Morning Devotion. <laughs> Happy 40th day to us. All right, Dr. Yay. Young. Okay. All right, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's 13. Number 13. Do you want to say anything about that, Dr. Young? Yeah, 13. So yeah. And may I really, my brothers and sisters, now is a really, I go everywhere and many people really, so much they share about their appreciation, morning devotion, not only from Canada and America, from all over the world. I am getting more about the response from all over the world. Uh, my brothers and sisters, really, I am encouraging you. This is a contental level, you know, our condition for second seven years, of course and through the Chung song, and then make the unity and support our true parents and support Korean Peninsula problems as well. Thank you very much for your uh, participating all the time. Come sum it up. Yep. Thank you, Dr. Young. And of course, thank you for preparing morning devotion every single day. All right, to close us out, I'd like to go to Delaware and invite Anne-Marie Myler, Anne-Marie Myler to close us out in prayer. <laughs> Dear beloved Heavenly Parents, our lives really has no value unless you are involved in it. And we are so, so grateful to be living in this time of the history of humanity, where we could have met our true parents, our true father, and still our true mother today on earth. We want to make sure that 
We are doing the best we can, our very best, every single day, so that there won't be any more restoration to be done. Restoration will be entirely done. And the only thing we have we will have to do is just grow Changli Cook. Heavenly Parent, we we want you to be able to rest. We want your sorrow to be gone. We want the sorrow of humanity to be entirely gone too. So every day we come here for morning devotion and we are so grateful to be able to listen to Dr. Young. And we know that you are guiding him and inspire him and helping him to do the best he can too. Heavenly Parent, we offer to you ourselves, we offer to you all the things we do. We want you to be present in every aspect of our activities every day. Whatever we say, whatever we do, whatever we think about, we want you to be right there involved in it. Because we can't do it by ourselves, but we can do it with each other we brothers and sisters across the world and we know heavenly parent that there is so many heavenly spirits who are willing and working with us they are not better than us but together we can accomplish miracles every day so thank you so much, Heavenly Parent, for this morning devotion. And we all personally wish that the whole world could listen to it. Because the first thing that we, every individual needs to do in order to become a better person is to listen and pay attention to what has been taught to us with gratitude, all this I pray with my brothers and sisters and wish a good day for everyone and a good night rest for those who have to go to sleep. And I pray all this in the name of Kem and Anne-Marie Myler, blessed Central Family, Aju. Aju, thank you. Anne-Marie Myler, your prayer is always touching my heart, always moving my heart. And also, not just only prayer, your shedding and your reflection. It is such a beautiful. Thank you so much. Kamsamida and Mori Myler. God bless you. Kamsamida. Thank you so much. Thank you for such a, just a deep, moving prayer to wrap this all up, Anne Marie. Brothers and sisters, it about wraps up today's morning devotion. Thank you for joining. We'll see you all bright and early tomorrow at 6. Have a nice day.